Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, we're making the ultimate DIY live well cooler. And you gonna like it because it's awesome. I already DIY the live well cooler. Well, two of them. But this one's gonna be a little different and a whole lot better. I got a buddy that made a live well cooler like my last one. Oh, <laughs> you make you one? Yeah, I got two of them. And he loved it. He showed it to us and he talked about it on the DIY rod rack I built for him. Today's what, Wednesday? Yeah. I went and caught, I put 14 brim in it Monday. Didn't lose one. It's probably the most used DIY I have. This is the original live well cooler that I made on the last video. I made this one and showed how you could use it for brim or you could use it for minnows. And there's nothing wrong with this cooler. It actually performed really well. The design of the build is fine, but I'm going to do a couple of extra things to my new cooler and make it even better. This is my new live well cooler that I bought. And this thing wasn't really cheap. They was having a Father's Day sale and I got 20% off. But you could make you one like this. I mean, this one works great. I only picked this one for a couple of other reasons. The first and the main reason I picked out a different cooler was because this handle right here. This is 28 quarts. When you fill it up with water, it's really heavy. And after I used it a while, this handle keeps popping out. With the new cooler I got, it's got like a super heavy duty handle that comes on it. And maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's going to work better. And another reason I picked the different cooler this cooler here it has a decent lid and it locks down when you push it but it's fell over on me a couple times in my truck and i lost half my water and my fish almost died but on this new cooler it's got these locks on the front and i just think it's gonna work better something else about these cheap live wells which is not a huge problem or issue but the lids are hollow i mean there's nothing in there. On this nitro live well, you can see the insulation to where they put it in the lid and plugged it up. Which basically means when the sun's beating on it, it's not heating up the inside of your live well as easy. And that's not gonna be the only difference in this build. I got a couple other things up my sleeve that I think's pretty cool. My old core's 28 quarts. This one here's 25 quarts. Not a lot of difference. And if you're wondering what kind of cooler this is, it's called a BMX 25 made by Igloo. So the first thing I did was I rode to Walmart and I got me some of these bubble stones. They're made by Aquaculture and they're 10 inches long. You'll find them over in the aquarium section at Walmart and they had two different sizes. One's a little bit shorter. It's like a dollar and 70 something cent. But the one I'm using is 10 inches long and it's under $3. And these things work really well. I've used them multiple times and I've made several of these live wells. Something else you'll need is you'll need some double-sided tape. Go over to the paint section at Walmart. Where the tape is, you'll find it. And I like this Gorilla brand tape, and it's not for any particular reason, except for I've used it several times, and this stuff don't let go. I even used it in my last live well, and it's still holding strong. And this might not be something you think about, but there's chemicals on this stuff and it doesn't seem to hurt the fish any, so I kind of trust it. Oh yeah, by the way, the reason I got two stones is because I'm using two pumps on this live well, and I'm fixing to show you why. On the last live well I built, I used a hush bubble, which basically pumps air into your live well. And you know something that a lot of people don't think about. Only 40% of air, I believe it's 40%, is actually oxygen. The rest of it is carbon dioxide and a few other gases. But whatever volume of air you're pumping in there, only 40% of it is oxygen anyway. My bad, it's 21%. <laughs> that right there is why I failed history. Anyway, so in this build, I'm going to use two different pumps, but there's another reason I'm using two different pumps. Now, on my new cooler live well, I'm using a different pump, and it's called a two-way hush bubble. It'll aerate up to eight gallons. You can use 1D battery, or you can use 2D batteries to run it. But what's really cool about it, it'll run off of 12 volts as well. And it comes with this little cigarette lighter plug. So if you're a bank fisherman, you can plug this into your car and it'll run your live well. And if you're a boat fisherman, you can plug it into your boat and it'll run your live well. Or you could get a different kind of plug and run this off a kayak battery if you're a kayak fisherman and wanted to use that. This pump here also runs off of 110, but you have to buy the plug it don't come with the 110 plug but 
it's still awesome that you're able to. Now the second pump I'm putting on this live well is totally different. This little bubble box right here runs off the sun. That right there is awesome. It has a lithium battery and it's probably like a 18650 or something, but you can take the back off and you can change the battery out and you can charge the battery and it'll run off the battery. But if you're out there fishing and the sun's out, this little solar panel will run the live well without a battery in it, according to the reviews. And the cool thing is, if it's hanging on your cooler like this and the sun's over there, you can flip this thing up and angle it to where it'll catch the rays of the sun and run your little pump. That right there is pretty dang slick. And it comes with a hose just like all other bubble pumps. And most of these things usually come with a little stone if you want to use it. But I like the big stones better. And this cool little pump comes with a little charging cable too. Now we've talked about all our stuff. We need to put it together. Okay, so I'm on the back of the cooler. The first thing I need to do is locate where I want to cut my slits. And I might cut my slits where this green meets this gray. It just looks like a good place to do it. The solar panel pump, it has a wide clip on the back. And our two-way pump, it has a skinny clip. So basically when I cut these little slits into my cooler, I wanna try to match this clip. This one needs to be a little bit wider than this one. Now that part was pretty simple. I mean, they slide right in, and this one here especially, it's real tight. But on the last cooler live well I made, everybody kept saying, put some Velcro under it. You see how tight this is? Like, that's why I never use Velcro. But on this one, since it's the ultimate cooler live well DIY, we're gonna put some Velcro under them and make them really tight. You can get Velcro over at the cloth section at Walmart. So you can get it off Amazon too, but it'll be over there where the scissors are. Now we got our pumps installed and they don't move anymore. Got Velcro on them. Everything's good. And remember, these two pumps are awesome. This one's 12 volt, 110, and it'll run off a D battery. This here runs off a lithium battery, and you can run it off the sun, and look at that. That's pretty dang awesome right there. Oh, and the switch that cuts this on's right here. Here it running. Truth be known, it'll probably run off my LED lights I got in here. Well next, right here and right here is where your hoses come out. So we're gonna drill a hole through the top, kinda high, so we can fill this thing up with water. But we're going to drill our two holes right here so we can run our hoses into our bubble stone on the inside. Now one thing you might wanna remember when doing this is to check your lid. Check your lid, make sure it ain't gonna hit your pumps. Make sure you got good clearance. And think about it too when you're drilling your holes. You need clearance. Something else you wanna think about is the handle. Is the handle gonna pinch your hoses? It's not gonna pinch this one. The handle does hit this thing. It comes down and rests on it, but it's not gonna pinch it either. It's got plenty of clearance. And just check that before you go drilling holes and stuff. Make sure everything's gonna line up right. I built these cores before, so I already know, but just in case you didn't, this hose is 730 seconds. You can silicone it in, but I never do. I just drill mine to where it'll be really tight and I don't never have a problem with it.
you see what I mean about the clearance? Nothing's hitting. Now the next thing we need to talk about is the placement of these bubble stones. This right here would be the ideal placement for the bubble stones right on the bottom. But there's a problem with doing it that way. Problem is one of the hoses had to come over to this bubble stone, but these little bait fish are hard to catch sometimes and you don't want no hose in your way when you're trying to catch them little boogers. Routing it this way keeps your hose from being all over the place. All I did was run both hoses through this stone and looped them around and hooked them in. I think that'll make it easier to catch your bait when you're trying to get it. And another thing before I forget, these hoses that they give you with these pumps now, they're so cheap and flimsy. Look at that. It's almost closed. You can buy hoses at Walmart and they usually keep them right beside of where I got these stones from and get rid of this crap. I'm going to change mine out the next time I go to Walmart. That's pretty much all we need to do. Pretty simple ain't it people? And here's your final result. Turned out pretty dang cool actually. That live well cooler turned out pretty dang cool. Now all we need to do is get us some bait and we can go fishing. I'm just saying. A lot of you guys leave questions in the comment section. Some people send me emails. But for any of you guys that have a question, I'm going to be on a live stream next Monday. That'll be June the 28th. And the way you can watch it is go over to Catfish Weekly's YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And Monday night at 8 o'clock, I'm going to be on there. And y'all can come on there and ask questions and stuff, I guess. I don't know. I think it's going to be fun, but it'll be next Monday, June the 28th at 8 p.m. Look in the description box, people. It's right below the video right now. And as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next build.